But before Maribel comes and we get into uh, this part, I just wanted to also say that when we were leaving the 20th century, uh, they, like magazine and some others, took us uh, uh, took the prerogative to say who were the top ten women who affected the last century of America, and the top ten women, uh, Maribel was right there with them on the front cover of Like Magazine. She's also a cancer survivor. But I, met, I forgot to tell you to stand up and stretch a minute, just for yeah, a second. Yeah, let's go. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. And you can go ahead and start, but as you get your little stretch, and then you can sit back down. Thank you, Arlene. You know, that was so long ago, I think there only were ten women in America. <laughs> Thank you, Rajni, for all of this. It's just great. Um, I suppose that most Americans think about cancer from time to time. I used to think about it occasionally, but I never dreamed that I would actually get it. My story begins 27 years ago. Some of you weren't even born yet. <laughs> Um, at that time, I had continual sore throats, and so one day I went to a new doctor to try to get relief, and this doctor felt the front of my throat, and no one had ever done that before, no doctor. And um, he said, you, <clears throat> excuse me, you have nodules on your thyroid, and you need to see an oncologist. Mm -hmm. Well, our good friend was an oncologist, so I went to him, and after his exam, he said, yes, you need to have your thyroid removed. Well, I was very busy, I thought, and I didn't have time for surgery. So I put it off for eight months, and then finally I had to do it. He was on my case, and I went into surgery thinking, this is no big deal. I mean, it's just a detour on my schedule, and I'll soon be back on the tennis court. I woke up from surgery to find a nurse holding my hand, and she was stroking my hand. And through the haze, I could see my doctor's face come into view, and I heard him say, it was malignant, and it has metastasized through your lymph nodes. I'm so sorry. And then he and the nurse hurried out of the room. I was in shock. I never, ever expected to hear that. Well, that was a new chapter beginning in my life that day, and some of you have experienced that. My doctor said you have some decisions to make. He said you can do radiation or not. It's up to you. He said we really don't know how it works. And if you were my wife, I would advise you not to do it. Such a dilemma. My husband and I didn't know what to do. How can you make a decision like that? So he called his doctor friends all across the country that he had gone to college with because we wanted everyone's opinion. Half the doctors said, yes, do it. And the other half said, don't. Well, it came down to my decision. And so I decided to do the radiation. Um, I don't know how they do it nowadays, but way back then, so many years ago, I was locked in a sealed hospital room for a week and then kept in isolation for a month until I was no longer radioactive. I came home and I tried to be upbeat for my family, but I was not doing well. I was struggling inside. And it's very humiliating for me to tell you all this, but I'm telling you the truth. I began to go down. I was supposed to recover and, and get better. And I was getting worse. I was slipping physically 
and emotionally. And um, as the months went by, it just got worse. And I, I couldn't do anything. I wandered around in our house from room to room each day. I just wandered. I couldn't focus. And I thought, well, what does the matter with me? I, I scolded myself and said, get a grip. Other people go through this. Why don't you? You can do this. But I was slipping into depression. Depression came down on my head, and I couldn't get out of it. I know, or I knew then, that a traumatic event like cancer can trigger depression. It's a normal response to a deep loss. I had lost my health, and my future was in doubt. My own doctor said my future was in doubt. I know that a traumatic event can dredge up unresolved hostilities that have been submerged for many years. Well, I discovered that I had all kinds of unresolved hostilities from my youth. And they, I could feel them bubbling up. It was just like they were coming up out of me and were overtaking me. It was a hard time. Also, I was so angry at myself that I had put off the surgery. And I was grieving inside. For some reason, I was preoccupied with when I was going to die. I wasn't afraid to die. That issue had been settled years before when I trusted Jesus as my Savior. He had paid the penalty for all the things that I had ever done wrong. And the, the greatest fact of my life is that I know I am totally forgiven and promised heaven when I die. So that wasn't an issue. But I didn't want to die yet. I wanted to live with my husband and my two daughters. But I couldn't get a grip on the depression. One morning I read in scripture that our days are numbered. And that may sound ominous to you, but for some reason that was so comforting to me. I suddenly realized the obvious that God knows how many days I have. I don't, so why am I wasting my time worrying about that? And that morning was a turning point for me. I thought, I am alive today, so I'm going to make the most of today. I'm going to love my family and my friends today. If tomorrow shows up, I'll make the most of tomorrow. So that changed everything. That, that little change of attitude. I suddenly, I, I had so much energy. I wasn't fasting, but I couldn't wait to <laughs> I wanted to do everything. I decided that I would go to counseling to deal with all these unresolved hostilities that were swirling around inside. And the counseling helped me so much it helped me deal with past grief and also to face the challenges of the present. And this is the most important for me. I decided that I was going to get to work on all those dreams and goals that I'd put on the back burner for years. And I thought, why not? Why give up before it's time? So I am thrilled. Um, after 27 years, I'm still here, and I believe that the Lord healed me. He restored my, my health, and he may have used the radiation. I'm so grateful. I wake up every morning excited because I know that God has a plan for our days. And every morning I read a little scripture to get the assignment for the day. And the assignment for today is encourage each other while it is called today. <laughs>